Hello and welcome to Podtoid. We are your hosts. I am CJ. I'm Chris. I'm Dan. I'm Charlotte. I'm Occam's. And this is episode four, four, uh, 414. Uh, we have a good show for you today. I just want to welcome everyone back after we took the Labor Day weekend off. Uh, thank you for joining us. Charlotte, I know you had a perilous journey to get here with your bus ride. <laughs> Four hours for a one and a half hour journey. Like, ugh. like the, the, the annoying thing is after two hours, you're allowed to get a refund and the bus arrived at like an hour and 55 minutes after it should have. So, <laughs> oh. uh, but I'm here. I'm here. Yeah, that's, and that's what matters. Four hours for a bus ride. That sounds like trying to get across LA. I had a pretty perilous journey too. Oh yeah? I, yeah, I, I came up the stairs and I had to carry a lot of cables while I did that. And at any point, I might have fallen down the stairs. So where's my, where are my plaudits? <laughs> Congratulations for not breaking your neck. I, Chris, kind of following up on that, man. I took a nap yesterday, uh, and when I woke up, and my back hurt. And that was really tough on me. Aww. Oh, yeah. We're all just heroes here. I, yeah. just don't, I, just, I just don't like it when... Like other people get sympathy, and I don't. That's that's all it is. Like, and I always have to kind of come in with my own little story, so it's like so people can feel bad for me as well. You you all know this because you work with me. So. Yes, uh, and I will say, if anyone on the show deserves sympathy uh, this week, it's definitely you because I've been trying. I've been trying week. to follow along to what's going on in the UK, but none of it makes sense to me anymore. Me trying to understand what is going on in British Parliament is like the first time I watched Primer. It it just right over my head. Dude, CJ, I, I'm right there with you. I don't know like what they can just suspend the parliament. Like, is that a thing? Like is there like a you just hit pause on the game? I I don't get it at all. <laughs> I'm not I'm not gonna obviously I'm not gonna really, really go into this, but like very, very basically or briefly. It's it's like that for us too because what we've what we've moved on to now is just a series of stunt versus counter stunt. So there's no debate or calendar or timing because every day it's literally honestly every day someone's found a new rule that nobody thought of and is quickly putting that into place. <laughs> so it, it's become like ah we've stopped. Boris Johnson from doing this and then a Tory MP digs out a rule from 1805 that's like oh but I can do this if I get this person's permission and then like the next day after that the the speaker will be like oh but you actually can't because this was once attempted in 1902 and so rather than it be kind of a debate or a compromise all it is now is people out loopholing each other <laughs> so there's there's nothing you can kind of set in stone as this is what's happening on a day-to-day basis because people are frantically scrabbling for like get out clauses, essentially. The point being is you don't know from go to bed to wake up, whether everything you heard about what's happening this week or next week is going to be a thing anymore because they're just constantly shifting the goalposts every single day. At this point, you could tell me that uh, Brexit is canceled because Boris Johnson forgot to, carry the wobbly stick while addressing parliament. And I would completely believe that as an American. Yeah. And, right. and I have to say, Chris, I'm it, it with a very heavy heart. I said, welcome to our world. <laughs> <sighs> Fuck. Uh, you will not want to stay in our world. Um, no. We have a lot to talk about today. Mostly the Nintendo direct that happened earlier last week. And we have some listener questions, uh, but first I want to start us off before we get talking about games with a story about real estate. Uh, Here in the US, prices are soaring across the country and it is a good time to be a realtor in America. The moments right before a bubble burst are always the best. It's it's made for a very cutthroat market and there are a lot of people trying to make money doing this, a lot of houses up for sale. So you really have to do what you anything you can to get people to pay attention to your listings. And realtor Miguel Calvo found a pretty unique way to get people to check out his house listing. Recently, Mr. Calvo listed a $400,000 home in the Nashville area and wanted to show it off with a bunch of pictures, you know, as you do on on any realtor sites. Uh, So he posted pictures of the kitchen, of the dining room, of the pool, of the bathrooms, of the garden, and then one final picture of him butt naked getting a blowjob from a woman who was face down ass up to the camera. I mean, if that doesn't get people to pay attention to your house listing, nothing will. 
Did he did he earn his red blazer off that? <laughs> <laughs> No, you're he, thinking of his red wings. That's something entirely different. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, he was completely naked and he was doing one of those really tacky things where a guy is having sex and then takes a picture of himself in the mirror while it's going on. So you can definitely see that it is him and not somebody else. Unless unless you're Patrick Bateman, you, you, can't, you just can't do that. It doesn't <laughs> I was work. just about to say, I think Patrick Bateman ruined that for everybody. <laughs> um. And the problem is, is that it wasn't just one website that he uploaded this picture to. Because when you're a realtor, you use a service that uploads it onto hundreds of websites. So that picture really got around the internet pretty quickly. I think Truly is now going to need an age verification page before he can go check out listings. Um, when he was contacted by the press, Mr. Calvo did confirm it was him, but would not identify the woman in the picture, which is probably for the best because he looks like Bobby Jindal's more boring older brother, and you'd hate to be known as the woman who went down on that. Do we know if the house sold? No, no word if the house sold yet, but you think it would because sex sells. Right, right. It's cozy. <laughs> some would say, some would say it's cozy. And I mean, like, nowadays people are just desperate to get on the property ladder. Like, <laughs> you, you, know, you know homes under the hammer, Chris, right? I'm aware of it, yeah. Yeah. Like nowadays you could just say, oh, this is a real fixer upper and like literally like the right. floor is missing and like you have to like put in something so you don't like fall into the earth and like you'd have a queue of like a thousand people wanting to buy it. It like it, it bodes well for a uh, estate real to porn, which I don't know if there's been one yet. But like, yeah, there has been. Okay. I may be on this Google right like now you're... trying to find that picture. And uh, yeah, there definitely <laughs> is a lot of porn. This looks like a real fixer-upper. <laughs> Chris, why do you you sound like a robot pretending to be from Texas and pretending to be in a porno? I've, I've never had sex. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's usually the first thing you do is you examine the genitals and say, this looks like a real fixer-upper. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Um, all right. So, yeah, that, that, that was a good way to to start the show off and he still has his job because he is an independent contractor. God bless America. Um, so in, in the same way, the guy who runs the, uh, the, the, the spray paints your own t-shirt booth and like in any Florida uh, vacation <laughs> destination is an independent contractor. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you still have those. They we I remember when I was a kid going on holiday, I saw those all the time, but I never see them anymore. My sister got me a T-shirt. She went on some Bahama cruise, and I, I love my sister dearly, but she brought back a T-shirt. It was my name uh, and a green neon green peace symbol, and that was my, my gift from the Bahamas. <laughs> and uh, and I, I, I sold it at a garage sale for 10 cents. <laughs> was the bothers, peace? Sorry, go on. I would say, which will, and I still, like to this day, I'm bothered by someone bought that. Like, I just kind of wonder what, like, grainy snuff film that was used in. <laughs> was the peace symbol not made out of hemp leaves? No. No, no. I was, like, 11 or 12, so that might have been a little <laughs> okay. a little too much. Yeah, maybe when you're 13. I, yeah. Like, I've never heard of this. So I what went into my head was people having T-shirts spray-painted onto them, like some sort of, like... skin. <laughs> yeah. Well, we do have mm. that. Yeah, we do. Huh. Yeah, it's mm. a great way to look at tits without getting in trouble, apparently, and, and Burning Man. Mm-hmm. It's also like apparently extremely bad for your skin, you know, like the original Tin Man makeup before they switched it. Yeah, or the uh, the Golden Lady from Man with the Golden Gun. There you go. Or Goldfinger, rather. Excuse me. It's one of those Bond gold films. Yeah, yeah whichever. Gold, Bond gold. films. <laughs> yeah. uh, let's go ahead and get talking about games. And Dan, we're going to start you off with a little bit of Control. Yeah, uh, Control. It's it came out. It's a little bit out of my mind. Has been playing something else I can't talk about. But uh, played it last weekend. I beat it and like. Roughly two or three sittings. It's not terribly long if you just kind of focus on the main stuff, which is what I was doing. Uh, there is some side content, but just the initial premise of wandered into like a seemingly abandoned government agency and conspiracies and all that and finding documents only to find a whole bunch of weird paranormal stuff. And let's say, you know, you have powers and you're fighting off things is a great concept that I wish more games maybe explored. And, uh, yeah, I think this is honestly one of maybe Remedy's best games ever, honestly. Nice. It's, it's that good. Uh, it's also and, very pretty. And if you're playing it on consoles, oh man, I hear I hear it has some bad frame rates. 
Yeah, now you've been playing this on PC with with uh, mouse and keyboard, so the controls have been working really good for you because that's one of the things I heard that ironically the game called Control does not control so well. Yeah, on, on mouse and keyboard, it's fine. I can't speak for consoles, but I heard about the, the performance issues. And I think a lot of that has to do with, like, the game is really hammering out some pretty up-to-date technology in terms of lighting and, and volumetric lighting and stuff like that, so it's not a big surprise. It wouldn't even shock me if this is more geared towards being a cross-gen title, honestly. Okay. Basically, I suspect we'll see... PlayStation 5 and the next Xbox boasting ray tracing and control and stuff. At least I think it'd be a great showcase for those consoles. Well, I know that ray tracing is supposedly going to be a big part of PlayStation 5, so... Yeah. I'm hoping to start control later this week, and it's funny because it wasn't something that was on my radar at all. Um, But I am a fan of Remedy, and so many people... I I really get this... I'm really digging this vibe I'm hearing from a lot of people about it being... um, really kind of out there in terms of like its story and its mechanics and what's going on in it. So even though it was something that I was like, oh, I'll put that on the back burner, maybe I'll get around to it. Now it's kind of something I'm actively seeking out. So I'm glad I'm glad that uh, you're enjoying it, Dan. Yeah, it, it caught me off guard until I read a, like Brett's review. I didn't realize it came out and then I read his review. And his review was like the pitch that kind of got me to go and spend the full price tag on it. And I don't regret it one bit. That was one of the games that was... Uh, everyone at E3 was talking about, so I'm really interested when I get to play it. Hopefully it'll come to my little Redbox rental soon. We actually have a robust video game selection in our Redbox at uh, at my local grocery store. It's really surprising. Um, but until it comes, uh, this week I have been playing Damon X Machina, and I can't talk about everything because I am under review embargo, but I'm looking at what I can talk about, and it's basically everything that is in the... Um, the prologue demo that is up right now on the Nintendo Switch eShop. And so basically, if you played the original prologue back in, I think it was March or April, when they were looking for feedback on it, uh, chance, if, if you remember it, chances are you're going to see a lot of improvements. And there are a lot of improvements over that demo. Um, the world is much more vibrant and colorful. Um, there is... Uh, the controls work so much better now. The gun, when you shoot a gun, it really feels like it has some heft to it. Uh, the action is a lot more fast paced. And, you know, I can't get into anything past those missions, but past those missions is when they start adding more variety to the game. And so, I, you know, if you go through those first 10 missions and you're kind of feeling that it's a lot of the same, know that that doesn't stick around too long. Um I, I, I'm really enjoying it. I, I, I can't wait to get to the end of it. Like yesterday, I played it for seven hours straight, and at no point did I think, oh, I need to take a break from this. Like I, was just, I was just going through it and just having a blast. So look forward to my, to my full review where I can talk about some other stuff uh, that happens later in the game. But you know, mostly uh, um, what you play in that demo is a good indication of uh, not necessarily what you'll be playing for the rest of it, for the rest of the game, but uh, how how well it will play, and you know it it really does hold up the the gameplay for that as you go through it. So um, let's go ahead and move on to Charlotte. Charlotte, what have you been up to this week? So I've been mostly playing Persona, the the first Persona in the series. Um, I've been playing the PSP version, and I have to say I've heard a lot of negative stuff about the first Persona, and. At least the PSP version is really good. <laughs> um, I'm, I can't really say anything definitive because I'm not really all that far into it yet. I'm about five or six hours into it. But there's a lot of stuff. So I, to, get to, to roll back a little bit, I have played a little bit of Eternal Punishment for the PlayStation, the, the original PlayStation. So I'm aware of what the old Persona, how clunky they are. But the PSP version of the original Persona has some really nice menus, um, very easy to access and to sort out your party with equipment, for example. Um, The isometric sort of movement is kind of my jam. Mm -hmm. And just little things like I wasn't expecting to have a system where if your protagonist dies, it's not game over, which is one of the most frustrating things about the later Persona games is that it's all about whether your protagonist dies or not, everybody else can be revived. So there's a lot of like little quality of life things that have gone into, I imagine, gone into um, the PSX and the PS Classic version being upgraded into the PSP remaster. Um, I'll definitely be sort of researching after I'm finished how 
what extent stuff got changed but just from like already having watched some youtube videos a couple of years ago it just it just looks miles better than what i've seen of the original uh, playstation one persona and it doesn't really have it doesn't have social links its story is pretty simple but it just it gets straight into the action which I really was really disappointed with Persona 5 because it just dragged on and on and on at the beginning with the story and mm-hmm. it just waffled and I feel like with every single release of Persona I'm a little bit less interested in it because it's just waffle the, the story just does not cut to the chase fast enough and even though Persona 1 barely to be honest barely has a story it's kind of very generic it it just gets on with the action and and seriously I'm like 20 I'm in my late 20s now I've not been in school for a really long time I do not give a (laughs) shit about school kids and their romantic lives at all so the less story I'm getting to a point now where I'm thinking actually the less story in my persona games the better and I think as I get older I'll want to play more shimigami stuff and not school kid persona stuff so yeah I'm having a really great time with it and I'm gonna definitely stick with it and hopefully write something for the first thing for a real long time, probably write something for Destructoid about it. The other thing that I I had a little go on last night with my my, my boyfriend is um, an FMV game called The Infectious Madness of Dr. Decker. Um, It's, so it's it's published by the same people who published Late Shift, but the creative team is different. Mm -hmm. Um, It's a bit unusual in that you, it's not like a film and you, pick options but rather you um cycle through different sort of therapy patients and you get options as to what to say to them to progress the story and at the moment we're kind of baffled by it because we're basically talking to them as much as possible about every single option that pops up we suspect that's not how you're supposed to play the game we suspect you're supposed to ask specific things and there's even an option to like input in the keyboard um your own questions rather than picking from a list and we've we've tried that a little bit and you can like ask things that are not on the list but we were so confused that we just didn't bother with it after the first half hour so we're going to play through it once and then see and try again asking Um, your own questions is like old school adventure game stuff right there yeah yeah didn't know what to ask that's the thing it was (laughs) um you're talking to like um i think the idea behind this is because you're a you're a therapist basically the premises of it is you're a therapist who's taken over from another therapist that was murdered and you're talking to all his patients to figure out what happened to him um and they, they all talk in riddles and they all contradict themselves constantly and so just asking your own questions is so difficult I feel like it just needs a bit more guidance in the game, to be honest, because I think a lot of people who play FMVs just don't have the patience to figure everything out. I I, t- I picked the game because I wanted an alternative to watching a film on a Saturday night. So yeah. I, I wasn't really expecting to have to figure all this stuff out myself. But it, the story is kind of interesting. The execution is pretty wobbly, but the story is interesting. I'm just glad that like people are playing FMV games again. Like... Mm-hmm. Um, uh, it's almost like they're going through a bit of a renaissance at the moment. I just think that's really interesting given like the, um, like trying to take a, a game that's so kind of woefully, a genre that's so woefully structured and so restrictive and, and turn it into something that a modern audience can kind of be interested in. And people seem to be doing like a really good job with some of them as well, which is, which is nice. Like uh, we need to get digital pictures back and I fucking dust off my 3DO and stuff like that. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think games like Her Story and Telling Lies have really maybe restarted a renaissance with those types of games, which is great because uh, Her Story is amazing, and I cannot wait to. I still need to download Telling Lies to my to my iPad, but I, I you know, the guy who who wrote that also wrote uh, Silent Hill: Shattered Memories, which is one of my favorite games of all time. So yeah, I'm gonna play mm. it. Um, but yeah, I, no. I love that. Uh, Telling Lies has the um, the fellow from The Invitation who is often confused for Tom uh, Hardy. Uh, but he's a, a very good actor yeah. and um, upgrade. He was an upgrade as well. And uh, that's, that's kind of that to see that Venn diagram crossover a little bit makes me happy. All right. Occam's you are up. You have been playing some path of exile. I see. Yeah. Yeah. Back just, on that. You know, just, just I have my army of zombies and skeletons and I go kill stuff and there's a plot and I'm sort of know what's going on. It's fine. You know, it's a free to play Diablo that gets some really good stuff. I mean, in some ways, 
I like the story more than in Diablo, and I like like um, I like my my characters' abilities, all the different because I, I love pet classes. Mm-hmm. But like the the currency system is garbage because it's not like you don't get money. You you essentially get like orbs of like armor upgrade, orbs of of transfusion to turn stuff. But it's all every little bit and piece you get can be turned into something that's then used as a currency. Uh, and the like auction house is uh, a nightmare. Like there's no you can't really sort by like how on eBay you could sort from like highest to lowest in terms mm-hmm. of cost. Um, and the interface is terrible and it's got a lot of, a lot of little problems in that regard. But when you're just playing the game, it's pretty fun. And then like the socketing system is, it's neat because you have so many different abilities. Like the, the skill tree is a, is just a nightmare. It gives me anxiety when I look at it to the point where I just sort of gave up on trying to make like the right character (laughs) and just, I'm trying to make a character I'm enjoying playing as because there are literally um over a thousand different little orbs things you can click on and fuck that it's too many it's a goddamn diablo kind of game we don't need that much choice i might, uh, I might be wrong i might be wrong here might be confusing it with something else but doesn't path of exile lock you into your tree choices as well like don't you have to do, are you able to change your mind down the line or do you have to restart a new character i to- i I'm not entirely sure buddy i'm i just i went necromancer as i do in all these kinds of games i never look back um so I just I'm stuck in the necromancer tree. It wouldn't surprise me because uh, they it's it's I mean end of the day it's free to play. So they, there is a system in place to make it kind of difficult unless you want to spend money. So like I'm quickly I have five stash tabs and they're very you know I forget the number of of boxes maybe there are hundred little boxes per tab and that's that's great for stuff. It's almost full now and I'm not even like right. I'm two thirds of the way through the campaign. But you can buy tabs and you can buy like special tabs just for your currency or just for your gems which is what you socket for your abilities and your weapons and gear and blah 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 and you know there's that's always a little annoying but it's it's fine if you kind of want to scratch a diablo itch but not play diablo uh so yeah let's uh, try that one out sure uh and other than that i have been watching an anime uh the devil sitcom uh <laughs> it's called demon slayer Kimet- i'm looking at the wikipedia demon slayer kometsu no yeba which is Japanese for little boy power fantasy. Uh, and it's, it's, it's published in Shonen Jump originally. And it's very, it's very typical of like the, it's a kid. He's like the chosen one, of course. Uh, and there's, there's, uh, there's a revenge story because his parents are killed. and He's got to go do shit, fight demons, but it's fun. It's uh, there's these little weird moments of humor. And then like, it's really serious, but all the demons, this kid fights, um, they all have different kinds of powers. And I love when anime gets creative with the kinds of villains uh, I think that uh, what was that fucking thing called? Uh, Full Metal Alchemist kind of did that a little mm-hmm. bit with some of the, the the things you'd have to fight or they'd have to fight rather. We're like, okay, well this one can like turn into air really quick, so we can't just like throw a spear at it. We got to figure out how to beat it. And I I like little when they have to overcome some obstacle beyond just cut it in half with your special sword. And uh, yeah, it's fine. It's, I've watched anime a long time, and the, the stuff that really like sticks in my heart is things like Cowboy Bebop and Akira and things like that. Uh, and but this is it's a uh, it's like having a, a chocolate chip cookie, you know, like it's not good for me, but it is good for me in, in the way that I need it to be at that moment. Uh, so, yeah. So this is so this is like teen friendly kind of anime. Team friendly. What does that mean? Team oh, teen friendly. friendly. Oh, I'm sorry. Your, your d- delicious accent uh, got in the way for a second. It is very <laughs> teen friendly. There's there's like, yeah, I mean, there's blood and stuff, but then there's also like, you know, a, a song they could put on a. On a, a like they don't make CDs anymore. Put on their MP3. They don't have MP3 players anymore. What do kids do? They put it in their <laughs> thumb drives. They put in their car and like listen to and wonder what, what a, like a girl smell like. I don't. You know, It'll be on Spotify. Yeah, yeah. And Charlotte, real quick, going back to you talking about that um, FMV game. There's one I've I'd never found a copy of it in, in the wild, but it's a full playthrough up on YouTube. It's called Contradiction Spot the Liar, where you're uh, an inspector Jinx who goes into this little British uh, village. And it's like mm. trying to figure out who committed this murder. It is a fucking delight. And I, if, if you, mm. you and your boyfriend just want something fun to watch, it's it's a really good time. Oh, cool. Sounds good. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's go ahead and wrap this up with Chris. You have been playing some River City Girls. Yeah, I've, I've been playing all of River City Girls. I I think I've hundred percent of the game now. Nice. So, um, and, I, and I haven't done that for a game for quite a while, so that's cool. But um, but yeah, um, my review went up. Uh, way earlier this week, it went upon Monday, it went upon Labor Day. Um, 
but yeah, it's it's as I'm, as I'm sure people know, it's like a brawler come RPG, and it's the latest release in the Kunio Kun series, which has been running since like the eighties. Uh, I think the first game we got was um, Renegade, or at least that's what we know it as over here. But that was the first game in the series, and um, mm-hmm. yeah, so. It's not a brawler in like the sense of say Final Fight or Streets of Rage. It's it's like a, a miniature open world, and the characters travel back and forth, and bad guys constantly respawn, and you fight and fight and level up. So it's not a case of stage one complete or anything like that from left to right. You you move around this world and you fight things and you go on little missions to uh, fetch quests or buy something from this shop and bring it back to me. And all the time these characters are these villains are respawning, and you just like beat them up but these areas are kind of punctuated by these really great boss characters so although it's um it's one big world it is chaptered off by Mm -hmm. these uh by these characters as and the map just expands as the heroes which are kyoko and masako as they learn more about their uh, kidnapped boyfriends who they're, they're on the case to rescue and it's just it's an addictive and it's a gorgeous game. Like the visuals are great. It's got all these big, colorful locations. Uh, the uh, the characters are animated beautifully. It's really good character design. The heroes are great. The NPCs are great. The boss characters are brilliant. And even like the store owners of all the shops you can visit, m- most of them are like cameos from the series. But there's also cameos from other, well, one other brawler in particular, and and some of their characters show up as well. And these shopkeepers, even they're like really cool and they seem to be blowing up on social media because there's like pictures of them popping up on Twitter all the time. Um, mm-hmm. all, ha- all hail Marion and her abs, who seems to be like the most popular of the, the store owners. Um, music's great. Uh, it's got these great instrumental pieces by uh, bands like Chip Zell and um, these really good like actual vocal songs. So like kind of straight pop songs that have verses and choruses and such who are done by you know, me, uh, Megan McDuffie and that soundtrack's just been stuck in my head like ever since I played the game like they, they're, they're just real earworms of songs and behind all of this aesthetic there's just this really good fighting engine like it, it evolves the brawler engine to have like special moves in it much like Streets of Rage 2 did but it's also got these optimal combos that are based on like one-on-one things like rebounds off walls and juggles and you can get these really long entertaining like combos and if you're playing two-player which is the best way to obviously play games like this then uh the way that you kind of can prop each other up in these combos it's just like really funny and really entertaining the the only real negative of the game is like you have to commit to that brawling like you will go back and forth across these rooms and you will fight a lot of enemies again and again and again, hundreds. And they don't just go down in like a couple of punches. They're like extended brawls. Mm-hmm. So you have to kind of adapt the same kind of mentality towards the fights in the game as you almost would to say, the, the example I used with a friend was, you almost have to adapt the same mentality as you would for like random encounters in Final Fantasy. Like you just know they're happening and you're you're willing to kind of work your way through them even though you're coming up against the same characters again and again and you have to if you adopt that mentality it's not a problem but if you think of the game as you think of say a final fight or something like that you might be like well these fights are really going on for a long time does that make sense yeah it does Mm -hmm. absolutely yeah but um, as long as that doesn't bother you i think people just really enjoy the game they'll like the mechanics the world and most of all like kyoko and sako are like fucking superheroes like in our time they're like these downtrodden down and out girls who are kind of a bit goofy and a little bit bubble bubble headed but they're really they're just like fearless and they're badasses and already there's all this fan art and cosplay out about them and i think if like way forward to play their cards right they could really make those characters figureheads kind of how shante has been a figurehead for the company mm-hmm. and um yeah th- and with these characters and this world and this great music and these graphics, it's just like a really likable game. And while it's not perfect, like, you know, I, I hundred percent it in a few days and I'm, I'll probably keep playing it. Well, I mean this, from your description, this absolutely sounds like a high school version of streets of rage. Yeah. I, uh, um, yeah, I saw, I saw that kind of straight comparison made somewhere. And um, I just thought that was a little bit, it's X meets X. Do you know what I mean? But, yeah. Uh, Surprised they didn't fit Dark Souls in there. <laughs> it's Final Fight meets Tag Team Heroines meets Dark Souls. <laughs> I don't know. God, I'd play that game. You 
are listening to Pod Toy. That is it for games, but we still have some headlines to cover. It is time for the news. And, you know, there were a lot of small stories this week as we really start to go hard into the busy season of the industry. But without a doubt, the biggest headline was the Nintendo Direct. This was rumored for a bit and with so many leaks beforehand, the biggest of which was the Overwatch Switch carry case that all but confirmed it was coming to the console. Um, CJ, they, spoilers, dude. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't want to get into that. Uh, thankfully, you know, that was uh, at least that was the first game they announced during the show because it would have really sucked if that was like the end announcement. Um, and I don't know if that was changed when that was leaked or, or whatnot, but uh, I was just glad to get that out of the way right, right, right away. Anyways, there's a lot of announcements, but we're only going to cover a few and we're going to start with the other bit of leaked information. Uh, before the broadcast, one of the Nintendo sites let slip that the next DLC character for Smash would be an SNK character. Most people assumed Terry Bogard, and they were proven right. Uh, Chris, as our resident fighting game expert, what are your thoughts on Terry's inclusion? Um, I don't play Smash, so uh, I'm not uh, excited one way or the other for his inclusion in the game, but mm-hmm. I do I do think it's fun to see another uh, fighting game character join this particular fighting game. And the idea that he's now in a game with like uh, Ryu and Ken is amusing because... Like we may never get that, we may never get that Capcom versus SNK sequel that everyone like wants. But at least like through Smash, we can have those characters fight each other, or like we can have Terry fucking fight I don't know Kirby if we want, or apparently, <laughs> apparently like Sans from Undertale or Solid Snake. Is he still in Smash? I yes, he is. is. Everyone's in Ultimate, right? Like every, everyone. Apart from Everybody's Waluigi. here. Apart from Waluigi, right? Apart from Waluigi, yeah. Well, he's but, a, um, a trophy. I think it's cool that they've reached out to SNK. It, it wasn't the character I predicted. I thought you were more on the ball, CJ, with um, Nakaruru from mm-hmm. uh, Samurai Showdown, who I felt not only kind of fit the mold with her look, but also I imagined with her pet, Eagle, her falcon, she could um, have a lot of interesting attacks to do with that. And I think a lot of people predicted that character and i think that's why that character was one of the teased ones in the video wasn't it like she was one of the people who tried to grab the invite in yeah. the trailer but i had it so far. the best thing about this inclusion is that fucking video because it just yeah it really took the heartstrings of like the snk style and animation that i spent thousands upon thousands of hours playing with from like the year 1990 forwards so to see like kind of all those characters in that style going after that invite. And then when I saw like the gloved hand picking up, I know, oh, it's, it's fucking Terry. He's really getting around at the moment because he's in uh, Fighting EX Leia as a crossover character. And they also made that f- uh, female version of him for uh, SNK Heroine's Tag Team Frenzy. So it's been a, it's been a busy year from, uh, the guy, for the guy from Fatal Fury. I'm hoping fact, Femme Terry ends up an ultimate, alternate costume in Smash. Oh, that'd be great! Yeah, <laughs> and I, I love that Howard Gee straight up died. <laughs> just, just, just <laughs> trying to get right there. <laughs> that that's how like these invites they're that um they're that precious to people that they will they will risk their lives and die trying to get hold of them. <laughs> I'm sure some people are kind of disappointed that it wasn't another. I I have heard that there are people who are being like we're branching with with like Joker and stuff like we're quote unquote we're branching too far away from the source of what Smash is, but that game's got so many characters in it now that I'm not even sure it can be considered like something that needs to stay close to the heart of Nintendo. I don't know. I'm not a player, so I don't really have a dog in the fight. But. Yeah, I mean, maybe the next one, when they don't have so many characters in, they can, you know, return to its roots. And I'm making air quotes as I do that, that you can't see, um, you know, because the, we're never going to get another Smash Brothers like this, probably for a very, very long time. And uh, Sakurai has gone so forth to say that himself. So I'd much rather just get as many different franchises in here as possible. Uh, I was talking to to Jonathan Holmes about it because he wrote that piece on Saturday about how it has turned into video games, the video game. Uh, and I was saying, you know, I would rather have Terry than say 
unnamed fighter from urban champion or one of the cars from stunt race fx you know at least he is a character that i recognize but you know maybe with the next one we'll, we'll go get the mole from mole mania as one of the one of the characters but i don't want to have that as dlc i'd rather have someone in someone i normally wouldn't think of or play like terry because i don't play uh king of fighters games and you know fatal fury hasn't made a new game in i don't know since 1999 um yeah, so I'm excited about his inclusion. Uh, I'm very interested interested to see who this last DLC character will be. Although, as I say that now, I am reminded that there's going to be more characters after the season pass is over. So, who knows how long this thing will go on? For me, there's this kind of joy of of like these these were conversations we had in 1999. Oh yeah, <laughs> when these games came out, and we're like, oh man, we you know get drunk or whatever, and be like, what if what if like yo know, what if the predator was in Smash Brothers. Like, it's fucking <laughs> serious. What if the Predator, the fucking Predator, was, hold up, oh, God, too much beer. What if the Predator was in Smash Brothers? And, like, now we've got, you know, you see, like, between Mortal Kombat and Smash Brothers, you have this, just this, this wonderful world of, like, answered questions in, in such a great way. I love it. You know, I don't, I don't play Smash uh, anymore, and I don't, I don't play a lot of Mortal Kombat beyond the story mode, but to see those things included, like, the, the 18-year-old me is just shitting himself and it's not because of all the shitty beer but it's it's just it's such a it's it's fun it's a lot of fun uh, okay like straight question around the horn or whatever are we gonna see scorpion in a smash brothers game one day no 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 is that the line stepped over i i i would say they would never have a, an m for mature character in there but bayonetta and uh, solid snake are there so they yeah they, they might here's how it happens you get scorpion but it's the funko pop version <laughs> <laughs> all right <laughs> <I'm out. laughs> all right let's go ahead and move on into the next game we're going to talk about is animal crossing new horizons the nintendo debuted a new several minute long trailer for the game during the direct that highlighted what life will be like on the island during your first few days or weeks or maybe even months it's hard to tell uh, Dan, I know you're looking forward to this game. What were some of your thoughts on the new trailer? Okay, so right off the bat, the one thing that that stood out to me was uh, now I don't know if this is in the in the mobile game. I haven't played the mobile game, but he put he put a chair outside of his house. So, so I'm thinking, man, we didn't expand our yards. We didn't have yards like in general. That was introduced in Happy Home Designer, which was the 3DS spinoff. And me. Uh, All right. Well, yeah. And um, technically, you know, most of the furniture that you put in the uh, pocket camp is outside. So, but yeah, no, I, I agree with you. I, I, I'm finally happy to have a, a mainline Animal Crossing that lets us have yards. Yeah. And uh, like, even just seeing like a, a proper Animal Crossing game be on a, not necessarily a home console, but back on like a mainline console again and and seeing all the little details like the the wind swaying in the leaves and stuff mm-hmm. like that and all the the little improvements quality of life stuff like being able to just cross rivers with that pole thing I'm all about it. Yeah, absolutely. Um it looks like grind uh, um grinding out materials for crafting is going to be a big part of it. And I know when the initial trailer was revealed like that was kind of a point of contention with some people but Yeah, I'm a bit lukewarm on it. I, I I just want to see what it is, what it's like in practice, because, you know, like you said, the 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 upgrades in art direction, like with the the leaves blowing in the wind, uh, and, and when you look inside some of those houses, you know, even though it, it looks kind of the same to an old Animal Crossing, when you look close at it, you look, you, you realize, wow, they've actually made some advancements. On, yeah, no, there on there the is back. detail in everything. Like I rewatched that footage a dozen times, and I kept finding new things. As for, like, the crafting stuff, it's going to boil down to how much of a grind it is. If, it, if it's if it's just a matter of seconds to craft, like, something like a pickaxe or something, that doesn't really bother me too much. Because, in you know, in the previous games, you just go to the store, and if it was there, you'd just buy it. So if it's still in that same, like, time frame in terms of ease of time, I guess, it's not going to bother me too much, but... If the crafting is involved in almost all of the items that become important here, I'm I, I could see some issues maybe, but I don't know. For me, as long as crafting doesn't lead to microtransactions, I'm fine. Because if if anything, it's just going to get me to play the game longer each day. 
they haven't confirmed this yet, but I'm I am hoping so badly. If they could introduce like those those classic consoles again and just making it excuse to be like, hey, do you have a Nintendo online subscription, blah blah blah? What if you could play those NES and SNES games in Animal Crossing? I yeah, <laughs> they're not gonna do that. <laughs> I really want them to though. <laughs> just imagine you, you finally buy a little SNES, you hooked it up into your TV in, in your little house, and then it just boots up the SNES thing for you to play it in the game. A game with the games. <laughs> Hey, everyone. Do you love SNES games? Well, how would you like us to introduce a middleman to the process? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't know. That's a bad idea. <laughs> I'd, I'd be down with that if you had to go all the way. So, like, you bought the little console and you exactly. took it home. Wait, and, and then the it was, wait, too. I'm not done. And then it was like, <laughs> oh, your TV's not got scar. You've got to, like, go and buy an RF. You've got to go and craft an RF. It. <laughs> Fucking RF adapters, man. God damn. Damn, that sucked Christmas Day. <laughs> I would be all of Super Mario World in Animal Crossing. They, they kind of did that in The Sims 2, but you didn't actually play the game. Your sim just played a game in the game. Like, And I, I do not see that being a good idea. <laughs> hey, I mean, if the GameCube game to do it, let's bring it back. <laughs> and let's make it so you got craft RF tables. Yeah. I want to give a big shout out to my dad uh, for going out to Kmart. The one Kmart opened Christmas Eve because they gave me my Nintendo 64 early. Uh, martini poured into a plastic cup in hand uh, to go find an RF adapter so I could play my my N64 on Christmas oh, that's Eve. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. It's a good dude. That's great. Um, one game I want to talk about real quick that wasn't part of the our Nintendo Direct, but it was part of the Japanese Direct. Um, we learned that the never released in the West un RPG Moon is finally going to see release worldwide on Switch and in English. Onion Games, who just might be my favorite indie developer out there right now, is doing the porting. Uh, it is releasing in Japan next month and, quote, not long after that in English worldwide. If you don't know what this game is about, basically, um, from what I from what I gather, it is a kid who is sucked into an RPG, uh, JRPG, where he follows around the hero and tries to, I guess, make amends for all the damage the hero causes. So when you think about like going through a JRPG, uh, all those innocent you know little creatures you kill for XP, this game kind of looks at the repercussions of those creatures uh, and those actions. So if anything, with with a game like Undertale that sold more than three million copies. Uh, now is kind of the perfect time for this game to make a comeback. I can only hope people give it a chance because it looks like it's going to still be the four by three screen ratio, which can be a turnoff to people who are used to everything being widescreen. But um, that was, you know, that was that made my jaw drop when I found out that was coming uh, because that is a game I have just am- admired from afar for so long. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to throw that in there. Um, and really, before that. The announcement that made my night had to do with Swery. Uh, first, we got confirmation that Deadly Premonition was coming to Nintendo Switch. It lost digitally the day of the Direct, though apparently there are, are some patches that it needs before it can be as good as it can be. Uh, and there's a physical edition coming out in November. And if that wasn't enough, out of nowhere, uh, Deadly Premonition 2, A Blessing in Disguise, was revealed as a Switch exclusive I know Nintendo ended their show with the Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition, but really this was like the mic drop of the Direct. Uh, Charlotte, I figure you might have some thoughts on these two games. What did you think of this announcement? So I am kind of baffled by Deadly Premonition 2. <laughs> so I just I just watched the video from the, the Direct and I just I don't get it, but... Deadly Premonition, you don't get it. That's the point. You're not supposed to get it. So I, I don't know. I'm excited, but it's like, is this going to be bad in a way that's interesting or just bad? That's the question. I think so. the interesting thing there, which is, which is based on exactly what you, what you said, is that because the first game was released and then developed this reputation off the back of it, what happens when you're making a sequel and you're actively trying hard to make it kind of bad on purpose, if you know mm. what I mean. 
Like, I don't know, will it carry the same? Will it feel a little bit more forced if it's bad? But like, hopefully it'll just be, it'll be, be really entertaining and really playable and still bad. But it's kind of like how, <laughs> anyway, it's kind of like how, right, we talked about Ninja Terminator. Ninja Terminator's kind of terrible and entertaining, but Birdemic isn't entertaining because it's going out of its way to be rubbish. So it comes mm. across as try hard. And it'll be interesting to see if they can get that balance with the sequel, knowing that the audience is buying it, hoping it's not very good, if that makes sense. I'm just, I'm confused because when I watched it, there was, it seems as though York is a character in it and he's sort of sharing a story with another protagonist, but it seems to be pretty separate from the story of Deadly Premonition and there's no like weird tree shit going on anymore, which is kind of disappointing. I did love the weird tree shit. See, I I feel like we're going about it the wrong way of looking at it as bad. I don't I don't like it's like Ninja Terminator, even Samurai Cop. I don't I don't think they're bad in the sense of like we're gonna make a shitty movie. I think they're unaware. I think they were made in a bubble um, with a certain vision that criticism from the outside didn't apply. They didn't give a shit. Uh, and, and I think with, with Deadly Premonition, can you capture lightning in a bottle? I, I don't know. Uh, I, I, maybe. I mean, I've certainly seen stuff that has surprised me in such a wonderful way. Um, I, you know, we'll see what part two comes out. It, it's, it's tough having that legacy established now. Where do you go from that? Because now you're aware of it, and that's a bad thing. You know, yeah. when Adam and Eve saw that they were naked, they put on clothes, and that fucked everything up because, you know, they were both hanging dong and a really good set of tits, and now that's gone. They're, they've become – they're shamed. So basically everyone needs to go to church is what I'm trying to say. Uh, so it's just – it's it'll be difficult to see if that will – I'm excited about it. I'm very excited. And it, more people playing Deadly Premonition is always a wonderful thing. I mean – it's the way I sell it to people who don't know what it is. Like, do you like Twin Peaks? There you go. Go play Twin Peaks the game because that's what it is, and it's so much fun. But you know, well, two, I'm 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 cautiously optimistic. Yeah, and it's not all that easy to play Deadly Premonition, the first one nowadays. I think I think you can get it on the PlayStation Store, but a lot of it's reliant on you having still having an Xbox 360 or a, a PlayStation 3. So any option to go back and play that if you missed it's got to be pretty good. And yeah. it, it is absolutely worth getting a PlayStation 3 or an Xbox 360 to play that game uh, just mm-hmm. solely for that one game. Uh, I would easily recommend that. That is a, and, well worth your time. And that physical copy has got like just got that big old Destructoid logo stamped right on the front cover. <laughs> as, of it, as it should. As it should. As it should. You are listening to Podtoid. All right, uh, that is it for the news, which means it is time for the Podtoid question of the week. Dude, is she going to powder her vagina? Sorry, that is not the Podtoid question of the week. Uh, this week's question comes from you, our listeners, in a segment we like to call the goddamn mail. Here's the mail, it never fails. It makes me want to whack my tail. When it comes, I want to will. Goddamn mail. Got some good questions this week. Thank you for everyone who submitted them late onto Saturday night and early Sunday morning. Uh, we're going to start things off with a query from Zalno, who asks, someone makes a platform fighter with all the terrible Sonic wannabe fighting mascots, pl- or, sorry, platforming mascots, which of those characters would you have in the game? Uh, Chris, you're a fighting game fanatic, so let's go with you first. I think that's the, I might be the third time I've been introduced as that on this episode. Um, I think I was going through my all these wannabe mascots that you talk about. And I was like, well, you know, does Plock deserve his comeback? <laughs> and then I was like, I was like, did, did Silly Putty really get the respect he deserved in 1992? And then I, and, and I was almost settled on Zool, almost, because uh, he's a fucking ninja. But then, like, I had the news on in the background while I was thinking about this. And I just saw the state of the world and the planet. And I realized... It, we need Awesome Possum back. Like, <laughs> we need Awesome Possum and his love for recycling. Uh, if we, if we, if we'd only fucking listen to him, CJ. <laughs> like, if we'd only watched when he gathered those empty bottles in that game, we might not be in the mess we're in today. But no, we all tried to be cool with Sonic and fucking RoboCod. We were wrong, Awesome Possum. Please, please come back. Well, you have to remember the problem is 
that Awesome Possum was released at a time when games were primarily aimed at men. And as we learned on this show a few oh, weeks ago, of course. Yeah. Uh, men think recycling is gay. So, yeah, it was. if he came out now, he'd probably be the shit. Oh, we talked about FMV games earlier, and he also blew up when FMV games, when that was where it was at. It was like, keep your platform as we've got Night Trap. <laughs> Uh, the the real manly shit. Yeah. Um, I would say High Seas Havoc with Havoc the Seal. Not because I'd want to play as him, but it would be the only game I know of where you can beat a seal. Havoc the Seal sounds like a t-shirt you'd buy at Hot Topic for a band <laughs> that is not going to be around for very long. <laughs> Havoc the Seal is opening for Portugal the Man this week. Uh what about Captain Novelin? He, he I don't was, even know uh, what that is. He was a platformer character for uh, a game about diabetes and how to take your insulin. <laughs> That'd be really good, honestly. <laughs> I'm just imagining the move set, honestly. <laughs> Pretty good stuff. I the, imagine the it's just like Dr. Mario, but with needles instead of pills. Well, there was that Hell one yeah. issue with uh, with Captain Captain Insulin, where he uh, he told the kids to get the insulin; they had to suck it out of his penis, and that was always unfortunate. <laughs> that was the first rated M for mature game. I remember that. <laughs> yeah. All right, uh, let's go ahead and move on. Our second squ- uh, question. Fuck. Our second question is from Slimy Bear two four five v two zero, whose name sounds like it should be the title of the next Kingdom Hearts side story. Uh, they want to know, and I have no idea what this question means. What is your dream fusion of terrible movies for the ultimate terrible movie game? Occam's, any idea? Yeah, I've 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 tried to parse through this and uh, slimy. Let, let me let me take a shot here. So thinking about this, um, and I've, I've since I've been watching a lot of you know, air quote, we'll call them terrible, but they're pretty wonderful movies. Um, it would be the Samurai Cop characters, and these, by the way, YouTube fucking Samurai Cop, go watch it. Samurai Cop characters set in like the Lucio Fulci zombie world. And what it is, it is a partial FMV game uh, in the style of uh, police quest where you can like shoot fat old white women in the head who are really racist and threaten to shoot up the town because that happens in police quest. Uh, it's also a beat up game, but there are also the Phantasmagoria FMV scenes where women just get straight up torn in half with their tits out because that happened in, uh, in Phantasmagoria too. Uh, so that is sort of, what I thought of with this question, Slimy, let me know if I answered your question because <laughs> I'm still not entirely sure what it means, but I think that's it. Okay, so like terrible movies that you a whole bunch of them in a video game context, maybe? Question mark. Okay, what if just like all of the U Bull movies, all of the shitty, awful video game movies that he did, but they're, they're all just one giant game now and he, you progress through them like levels. I believe remember, that game was already the made. Cry level. Oh fuck! Great. Yeah, it's called Bubsy Paws on Fire. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> so I would like to see. So it's something about Mary, the the old woman from that film, <laughs> and um, combine it with all of those terrible like skate video feature films that are recorded by seventeen year olds who are like, yeah, totally red, bro. Um, and basically it's like a really terrible port of skate, except for you get points for keeping your wig on and not smearing your makeup. <laughs> I like that. I like that. And with a cameo by the cast of Rad, the BMX movie. I've never heard of that, but sure. It's like, sure. I'm much older than you, so it's fine. You have no reason to. Okay. Uh, Occam's real quick. Wes would like to know which of us thinks he looks better naked, seeing as we have both seen him naked. I don't know what that means, but clearly I think he looks better than both of us naked. Oh, my God. So I, I, he was he uh, ended up uh, staying with me a couple weeks ago and I, I he walked through the door and I'm like, son of a bitch. I am the before picture and you were the after and I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> um, He's a handsome motherfucker. Yeah, he is. Uh, next question is from Chaos Nidhogg, who submitted a few of them. Uh, they want to know why Sony won't push uh, PlayStation VR 2 for the PlayStation 5 when it has made its, a name for itself with the PlayStation VR. I'm going to go ahead and word this a bit differently. Do you think we'll see a PlayStation VR 2 with the PlayStation 5? Uh, I wouldn't think it's top of their priority, so possibly not, no. I don't... 
So they are, as far as I'm aware, the only current gen console that is VR compatible. But I think if people really want to play like a hardcore VR enthusiast, they probably have a Vive or an Oculus instead. I mean, plenty of people do have a PSVR, but I wouldn't go as far to say it's like anything really monumental about the PS4. Um, And a lot of the really big hitter games I'm thinking of with VR, it's just optional. So I'm saying it's a possibility, but I don't think they'll be put like throwing all their effort at that. I I would be surprised if they are. Yeah, I think since you got the wireless Oculus set, I mean, Mm. it's going to be a tougher time to sell someone something that is wired to a PlayStation console Mm. going forward. Which is why I think I disagree, honestly, because I feel like if there's going to be another PSVR, it's going to be in that direction. A wireless Uh, PSVR? Yeah, how they'll go about doing that, I don't know. But like the PSVR itself is like, the dominant VR headset in terms of overall sales and the library of games and stuff. And in terms of getting like VR mainstream recognition, it just has to be on consoles. So, and I I feel like Sony knows that. And I don't think we'll see it at launch with the PlayStation five, but I suspect like the, the the current PlayStation VR will work on the PlayStation five and it'll even enhance those games further. So I don't know. I, I think it's a strong possibility, honestly. And I think they'll go in the same route as, as the Oculus and try and make it wireless. My only thing against that would be, you know, we say that the PlayStation VR is the, you know, at the head of the pack in terms of sales, but isn't that just like 3 million units? Isn't that just 3% of all PlayStation owners? Yeah, as bad as that sounds, but I don't know. Like, I still see the library games, and, and I still stand by the idea, though, that, like, if VR is going to get mainstream recognition, it's going to be on a console, I think. Uh, Next question, go to hell, die, die, die. Great name. Uh, Would like to know which franchise or developer is in desperate need of its own racing game spinoff. I'm going to go ahead and say Star Fox because all of the rumors of a Star Fox racer now make me really want a Star Fox racer. Like just a race through space and across planets. Instead of a kart racer, would it be like a flight kind of like airplane racing? Hell yeah. And you can have kart because they have the Landmaster tanks. Yeah, yeah. That's a really cool idea. I don't know, this this is probably a little left field, but what about a kart racer? But all the characters were from the Super Mario franchise. <laughs> Go on. Mm. What do you think? Mm. I, might, I, might, I, might, I might write that on a bit of paper and mail it to myself because people think that's how you copyright ideas nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Failing that, I'd have to say Mortal Kombat, WWE, or Garfield. Why you just stole all my answers? <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna, I was gonna say WWE Crush Hour too, but fuck. I think Sorry. Crush Hour would be rad. What about if you took like the the catalog from Devolver Digital and made a kart racer with just a bunch of those characters? Because they mm. did, um, they did Hotline Miami, right? Mm. They right. published it, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like just some fucking Hotline Miami and a kart racer. Just that like, kind of shit. Right, and the ape from Ape Out and the... the Metal Wolf the, Chaos. Yeah, the gun-toting yeah. banana. I love this idea. This is the best one, honestly. <laughs> that'd be that, I think that'd be the first about. rated M for mature kart racer. Yeah, I was about to say, that'd be a trippy-ass game. I was going to say, what about... And I think, I think this is not as controversial as Chris's suggestion. What about mm-hmm. Silent Hill? <laughs> <laughs> I mean... <laughs> It would be it would be simultaneously the best and the worst kart racer ever because you would have like rules such as James is not allowed to overtake Mary or he has some sort of existential crisis and crashes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and there'd be fog everywhere. You couldn't see shit ahead of you. Constantly hitting. <laughs> can't, see, can't see like two feet in front of you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Charlotte. The sad thing is, is like much in the same way in, in train spotting when you and McGregor shove that a uh, heroin suppository up his ass. Uh, in, a, in a desperate attempt to get high, Silent Hill fans, which I would absolutely include myself in this, would eat it up because at least it's something, God damn it! There would be people making, like, forum threads being like, we need to buy this to convince them that there's still <laughs> money to yeah. be made here in Silent Hill. Absolutely. Uh, all right, Occam's, our next question is specifically for you from resident weatherman Anthony Marzano. In 10,000 words or less, what is your favorite Mountain Goats album? Uh, Tallahassee. 
Uh, I have not heard the new one, uh, which is based on Dungeons and Dragons, which fucking the uh, that Mountain Goat. Do, do y'all know Mountain Goats? Nope. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah. Well, CJ, uh, you would you would quite enjoy them. It's a guy, uh, John Darnielle, uh, who is a gifted lyricist and uh, just an all around cool nerdy guy. And uh, it's just in this this group called the Mountain Goats. Been around forever. And he does these concept albums. And he did the the one before the the current one, the D and D one, was about goths. Tallahassee is about a couple uh, on the verge of divorce, and it's just a really beautiful, intense album. Uh, and he's just got about a jillion songs out there floating around. Actually, in kind of a sad note, did my favorite song about someone dying of cancer. That's a long story, but it's just a really beautiful, kind of heart crushing song. But it means a lot to me, uh, and it's super good. It's at Tallahassee. It came out in two thousand two. It's an old classic. It's art. I mean, widely considered like. It's a good. It's like the album where a lot of people got into him, myself included. Uh, but then I went back and downloaded all of his like '80s and '90s like mixtape things he made. Uh, I haven't heard the new D and D one. I should. I will. Uh, but it's. It's. I'm looking forward to that. But yeah. So Tallahassee. Uh, if you're. If you're curious, you like singer songwriter stuff. Tallahassee. Oh, he also did a song called Lovecraft in Brooklyn, which is about H.P. Lovecraft going to Brooklyn, freaking out because of black people, and uh, just feeling paranoid. It's a really good song as well. <laughs> Sounds true to the character. Um, mm-hmm. Moving on, we are all pretty much movie fans here, and this next question has to do with one of the greatest filmmakers of all time. Pliskin would like to know which Steven Spielberg movie do you think would make an awesome video game, even if the film or if the film never existed. I'm going to go ahead and ruin a great Steven Spielberg movie with my suggestion, but uh, Goonies would make a great narrative walking sim. As you just descend further and further down into this cave, solve the the riddles and the traps. If that was, if the Goonies was never a movie, I think the plot of that film would actually still make a really good Dear Esther slash uh, what what became of Edith Finch. That can't be the right name of that title um, of that game. Ethan uh, Carter. No, it's it's Edith Finch. Oh, Edith. Yeah. yeah okay. I see yeah. What saying, became yeah. of what happened? Something like that. Great game. Play it on Switch and PlayStation Four and everything else. Um, either way, that's that's my answer. Like Goonies would absolutely make a great addition to that genre. Follow up to that, CJ. Uh, Goonies, but it's like Uncharted, the teenage version. Oh, that's a better answer. Fuck you, Occam's. <laughs> I was I was blown away when I was looking this up, but like how many of his films have already been made into games? Either mm-hmm. ones he directed or he produced. Because there's the Indiana Jones, E.T. Obviously, uh, Jurassic Park, Hook, and um, even Jaws. If you remember, there was like a Jaws game on PS2 that was like that was like eighteen Jaws certificate. Unleashed. Yeah, it's eight Jaws Unleashed. No, just, there's a boss fight where you fight an orca whale in a swimming pool, and it makes Fuck me so yeah. happy. Yeah. You yeah. It <laughs> yeah, that game. That's it was actually my answer was that even though it exists, it's the fucking Jaws game because that's right. awesome. Same boat, honestly. I'm. Um, I think I'm going to go with uh, Jewel. Like, you could be like Dennis Weaver, and you're like driving down the road, and it's kind of open world, and you just got to like stay away from that fucking truck. And then every now and again, every now and again, you can like pull over at a rest stop, and we can have like an over the shoulder survival horror section. Um, I did then think I don't know how you'd make an entire an entire game out of just like driving down one desert road being chased by a truck. So you might have to like just put some zombies in there and something. But then I thought you could like DLC it over with, with, with other films. Like you could have some road games stuff in there and some road kill and the hitcher. And uh, seeing as all this show's been about is fucking crossovers. Maybe we can just take <laughs> all of those like terror on the roads movies and turn them into mm-hmm. one big dual movie video game. Even well, going old school with that answer. I'm an old man. What you from? I always would see like a post Jud Laws, uh, Jude Laws, fast uh, last scene in AI game, like a like a beat 'em up, get out of jail thing. <laughs> I appreciated the very serious uh, silence at my answer. That was that was the, <laughs> that was the appropriate response to that statement. By the I way, I couldn't remember what Jude Laws last thing that he did in that movie he, is because all I can was, remember is uh, Haley Joel Osment talking to the Blue Fairy before the future. Robots come get him. The space police get him for murdering the lady, even though he didn't actually murder him. But since he's a robot and robots are second class citizens, they were going to throw him in robot jail for uh, for killing the lady he was supposed to have sex with because he's a sex bot. Yeah, nope, going right over my head. Yep, cool. I think um, so. 
I, I'm going to hold my hands up here. I obviously know who Steven Spielberg is, but I did not know specifically what films he has done. I am a terrible person. Um, so I'm seeing on this list he he had something to do with Gremlins, right? Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it would be really cool to have a Gremlins pet raising simulator, like <laughs> in 10 dogs, but with yeah, yeah, Gremlins. Yeah, not go wrong. Charlotte. <laughs> Girl, that's fucking awesome. <laughs> Hell yeah. I played the shit out of that. You, like have the choice as to whether you um, wreak havoc or whether you actually raise them properly oh. as Mogwise. And you have to have some Gremlins 2 DLC. Like as I'm sitting in this room, I'm staring at the spider gremlin that I have as a, as a giant action figure. So, Danny, yeah, you have an you answer? Can... Uh, he was the executive producer on Deep Impact. And why not? Let's do fucking Deep Impact. <laughs> Didn't that come out the same year as Armageddon? Like there were two asteroid destroying mm-hmm. the Earth Hell yeah. movies in the same summer. I want to go on an asteroid and I want to like die <laughs> while my daughter winds about her boyfriend or whatever, who I then launch into space. Yes, I don't remember Deep Impact all that much. I think that, I think that, I oh, think that was that Armageddon. Armageddon. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a... Uh... What was Deep Impact? That one had Morgan Freeman as the president, and I think Elijah Wood oh, and some no. lady survived at the end by driving a motorcycle really fast. Tay Leone, maybe? Might be. I'm not sure. Yeah. All, all, we've, all we've gathered from the answer to this question is, like, all of the films Spielberg directed or executive produced, like, had a NES game. Like, I'm pretty sure, like... yeah. <laughs> I think you you know, you look, Deep Impact probably had a NES game. I don't know. Maybe like a poltergeist game where instead you're the ghosts and you're trying to fuck with a, like an AI family in the house. That could be maybe fun. Oh, like the haunting. Sort, sort of a yeah. Sega yeah. Genesis game that came out that was that. Yeah, the haunting. Yeah. yeah. That's what it was maybe a little yeah. modern take on that would be pretty neat. All right. Uh, our final question, and because this has just been nothing but crossovers, why not just end with the crossover of all crossovers? Uh D Francis 22 asks if you are going to make a game that is a crossover with all other games, like how kingdom hearts does with Disney movies, which gaming characters would take center stage. Uh, so a big ass crossover game that crosses over with every other game, who would you make the lead characters and let's limit it to just three. Someone, someone start this question so I can think of an answer. This is okay. too big. <laughs> I'll go ahead and, and kick it off. Uh, I would just like it to star a Dragon Quest slime, a Goomba, and one of the, the whatever first robot you kill in uh, Sonic the Hedgehog. And it's just them getting revenge on every single hero for being the very first thing that you kill in the game. Revenge against bad employers. Hmm. All right. I, th- I, think, I think I have this. I have two thoughts in my head. The first one, which is not the answer, but it just occurred to me. It's Suikoden, but it's... All the Police Academy characters, <laughs> including the cartoon series. So that just I'm just putting that out in the world. I'll let that be. Um, I guess for my game, it would be Pyramid Head, uh, the Baby Commando from Captain Commando. And let's oh, – fuck, I didn't think of a third one. Let's uh, look around the room. Got a bunch of video game shit. Uh, sure. Uh, the Fallout guy. I have a Funko Pop thing for some reason. Uh, and their game, oh, it's just – yeah, no, <laughs> Fallout Boy. Yeah, actually, it, what's the power armor? I like Fallout Boy better. Actually, we'll do that. Uh, and their game is kind of in a quantum leap style to go right the wrongs of the past. Only uh, each one has sort of like Pyramid Head is Pyramid Head, so he just kind of murders people. <laughs> baby Head Commando is a baby genius, so he's trying to stop crimes. And uh, Fallout Boy um, is just there. I don't know. I don't really have a good answer for this. Cause it's too- <laughs> I, and I really, I kind of, I kind of, um, I kind of spent all my creative energy with my police academy sweeping and answer. So that was, we'll just go with that. That sounds like a Adult Swim cartoon right there. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's an unfortunate and very true statement. So thank you for calling me out on that. Yeah, uh, I guess Resident Evil Devil May Cry is just, just fuck it, combine them both. I don't know how you do that, but hey, I don't want to see Dante running away from Mister X. That'd be something. I, I've just I've there's been too many characters mentioned and too many pop culture references this episode and my brain's just melted. Uh, it, it, the same boat. Yeah, it's certainly easy to get burnt out on uh, on crossovers. Do, yes. do you remember in Armageddon how the the thing they wanted was never to pay taxes again? Yeah, that was their really. <laughs> that was your big prize for like risking your life in space. 
Okay, well, that's sorry. I just because they were all guaranteed hit. to be rich afterwards. So why would they want to pay taxes on that? I don't like. I feel like that is on the first page of a large PDF document <laughs> that I submit to the government of what I want in return for making this shit happen. I think I'd want Dream Daddy, but with terrible video game dads. I even wrote something <laughs> oh, about terrible God, that, video game oh, dads. Like, so definitely William Birkin, um, mm-hmm. and he would <laughs> definitely have the the shoulder eyeball in the game. Um, who else? I mean, Alex Shepard's dad in Homecoming, Silent Hill Homecoming, is not a very good dad. Come on, help me out here. Oh, Bowser's so, just, pro- Bowser's probably a caring dad. He's probably a nice dad, actually. Yeah, he just needs to like fucking wear a condom every once in a while. Who he does, does have all those kids? Bowser. He's got oh. nine hundred children. <laughs> Oh, and the heavy rain dad. Who is he? He was kind of a piece of shit. Uh, Ethan Mars. Yeah. Hold on your kid's fucking hand. Like, why? How is that so hard? Uh, he was a piece of shit when I played him because I just always did things like slammed the uh, the crockery down too hard on the table on purpose. I would and almost grab the groceries over and over and over, and it made me so happy. <laughs> and, 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 and when he has the sword fight like with his kid in the garden, I just let, didn't let that kid get a single hit in. I, I, was, I just parried everything <laughs> and took him the fuck out. Like. It's like the, the Billy Madison dodgeball scene. <laughs> there should be just one character who's just... You don't know who he is at first, but you find out he's actually the, the dad of all the Pokemon, like, MC characters or whatever. So we start those games, you have a single mom for whatever reason. Oh, I get it. Like, there's a guy who has who is impregnating women all over yeah, the regions. Yeah, he's a dude, and then it turns out he's just some Pokemon trainer that's been knocking up chicks. That'd be pretty fucked. It'd be fun to play as a game of, like, a concerned parent. Like, your, your, your child is, like, the hero of the world in, like, uh, Final Fantasy or Dragon Quest. But you're just a concerned parent following them around, trying to keep them safe. Because they're 14 years old, <laughs> and they have a, have a sword, and they've walked off to fight an immortal wizard. Like Brightburn, but f- family-friendly. Yeah. Also, a uh, Brightburn sim. Haven't seen the movie. Please don't spoil it. But I feel like just a, a, an amoral Superman sim would be pretty goddamn fun. CJ. Good looking editing this segment into something with any kind <laughs> yeah, of hey, flow or like precision to uh, the original question. Guys, let me talk about the Care Bear Cousins. <laughs> <laughs> there was that lion. That's the only one I remember. Oh, man. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and wrap this up. We are just about out of time. But before we go, Occam's, we have a community shout out this week. We do. Uh, it was a, a community member, uh, D- Deer, 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 fuck, Deers, D E R E. Someone say it, Deer. Deer. I've always said Dare, Dare, yeah. Dare. Sure. I'm a, you say Deer, I say Dare. It was that person's birthday, and uh, they're, they're around a lot. They're a good dude, and they're always fun. So big shout out to that person on their birthday. Happy birthday, buddy. Happy birthday, Don. Happy birthday. All right. That is it, folks. On behalf of Dan, Chris, Charlotte, Occam's, and myself. Thank you for listening to Podtoid. And don't forget to subscribe on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, Podbean, and the Destructoid YouTube channel. (laughs) 